So our topic today, is topic number nine. So it's topic nine, which is called the company secretary or company secretary. Company secretary. Company secretary. That is what we are going to discuss today. And we begin with the uh, introduction. Begin with the introduction. Right, that the company secretary is a senior. The company secretary is a senior and a legal position is a senior and a legal position. Senior and a legal position in a private company. <clears throat> in a private company or a public organization or a public organization first of all it is held by an individual it is held by an individual in the following capacities. It is held by an individual in the following capacities. The following capacities. Number one, number one, an employee of the company, an employee of the company, an employee of the company, Since he is appointed, since he is appointed by the board of directors, since he is appointed by the board of directors, just like any other employee, is appointed by the board of directors, just like any other employee but two a custodian of the companies a custodian a custodian of the company's confidential documents of the company's confidential documents since he ensures since he ensures safety of the documents since he ensures safety of the documents Number three, an agent of the board of directors. An agent of the board of directors. Board of directors. Since he attends all company meetings. Since he attends 
all company meetings. At the instructions of the board, all company meetings at the instructions of the board. Number four, a liaison officer. Ryerson, or liaison, a liaison officer. Since he acts as a link, since he acts as a link between the company management, is a link between the company management and the board of directors. At the board of directors by informing the management, by informing the management of the deliberations of the board, informing the management of the deliberations of the board. Number five, a secretary to the board of directors when invited. A secretary to the board of directors when invited. Uh, number six is, a secretary to the general meeting. A secretary to the general meeting since he's supposed to attend and take minutes. He's supposed to attend and take minutes. Now, quite often, when we hear of the word secretary, we think of the persons who are the exception. We think of the junior persons in the organization. But this is not just secretary, but company what? Secretary. Now, a company secretary is a senior person in an organization. Is actually a person who is involved in management and they are in the company at various capacities as we have noted that as a limit. So uh, the company secretary acts in uh, different capacities. One, he's an employee of the company because he's just appointed to the company just like any other employee by the board or by the bodies or the departments that have been assigned that duty. He's a custodian of the documents of the company because he's supposed to ensure that there is safe custody. Those documents are safe. Then we also say he's an agent of the board because he uh, attends the board meetings. And closely related to that, he becomes a liaison officer because when he attends the board meetings, the deliberations that are there, he's supposed to cascade them down to the management and tell them what the board is thinking. Then he's also a secretary to the board in case he's invited to the board meeting because it's not a month that he attends the board meeting. But once in a while, or when he's invited, he goes there and becomes a secretary. He also goes to the annual general meeting and he becomes a secretary. He's supposed to take the minutes of 
the general meeting, he or she. Okay, then down there, we write that a private company, a private company is required to have a company secretary. A private company is required to have a company secretary only if it has only if it has a paid up capital only if it has a paid up capital of at least shillings 5 million of at least shillings 5 million First of all, if a private company does not have a company secretary, if a private company does not have a company secretary, if a private company does not have the company secretary, semicolon and point number one, point number one, Anything authorized or required to be given to the secretary, anything authorized or required to be given to the secretary, is authorized by, is authorized by, or given to the company itself is authorized by or given to the company itself. Point number two, anything addressed to the secretary, anything addressed to the secretary is treated as addressed to the company is treated as addressed to the company another one is number three anything required to be done anything required to be done by a secretary, anything required to be done by a secretary is done by a director. Is done by a director or a person authorized by a director or a person authorized by a director for that purpose, or the person authorized by a director for that purpose. So let's look at December 2022, question 2C. December 2022, question 2C, and Roman 2. Then there will be November, 2020, question 6A, question 6A. So, Mr. Mayor, you are December, please. Question 2C. I think in a summary, so what? Right, in a summary. 
This girl, the race is the German government, does not have a compensation that are against services of the government and authorizes matters that are not a compensation. Okay. Uh, actually, we should even have uh, answered from uh, just part C, eh? the whole of the part C. Because part C in a seminar, with specific reference to company secretaries, eh? identify the circumstance under which a private company is required to have a company secretary. So you are only supposed to have a company secretary if your paid up share capital is more than what? Five million to do. It may be kind of. A private company is not required to have a company secretary, not unless it has this paid up share capital is at least what? Five million. So, in other words, you should have a company secretary if you are a private company and you have a paid up capital more than five million. Then to notice so what describe the ways eh, uh, in which a private company that does not have a company secretary undertakes the service of documents and authorizes matters that require a company secretary. So we have given three ways. Because number one, anything that is supposed to be authorized by a company secretary, it is the company itself that will authorize. Then we have said anything that is supposed to be given to the company secretary or to be served to the company secretary, it is going to be served by, uh, to the company itself. It's going to be served to the company itself. The other thing we have said is that anything that is addressed to the company secretary by whoever who did not know that we do not have a company secretary, it is deemed to have been addressed to the company. So in other words, the company cannot say how it to me a CC Parua because when you to me does not exist in our company. No. Any letter that was sent to the company secretary, it is deemed to have been sent to the company. And then we are also saying that uh, if there is anything that is required to be done by the company secretary, then it is a director who should do that. And if it's not a director, it is a person who has been authorized by the director to do so. And uh, in a while, we shall be looking at the duties of company secretaries. So we will see what is it that the company secretary should do. Now, in the absence of a company secretary, those things should be done by a director or a person they have authorized. November 2020, question 6A. November 2020, question 6A. Yeah, it's on page 16. In Asema, discuss the ways through which a private company without a company secretary operates. So we have said so. I think that is good. All right, let's now look at uh, qualifications. Qualifications of a company secretary. One. Must have sat and passed. Must have sat and passed. The relevant examinations. The relevant examinations. The relevant examinations for company secretaries, for company secretaries, administered by CASNE, administered by CASNE. Number one, 
Number two, must have acquired the requisite experience. Must have acquired the requisite or the required, the requisite. Requisite. Requisite experience required to discharge the functions. Required to discharge the functions of a company secretary. Another one, he must be a member of the Institute of Certified Secretaries of Kenya. He must be a member of Certified, sorry, a member of Institute of Certified Secretaries of Kenya. A member of Institute of Certified Secretaries of Kenya. Another one. He must be a holder of a practicing certificate. He must be a holder of a practicing certificate. Practicing certificate issued under issued under the certified public secretaries of Kenya. Issued under the certified public secretaries of Kenya Act. Next is other required attributes include other required attributes include you can jot them down running skills running skills we are talking about running skills we are talking of Decisiveness, decisiveness. We are talking of good communication skills, good communication skills. Another one is commitment. Another one is integrity. Another one is keen on details. Keen on details. Keen on details. Keen on details. So we are saying that for you to practice as a company secretary, number one, you must have sat and passed the exam, which is called the CS exam, right? which are administered by CASI. Then you must be a member of the Institute of Certified Secretaries, which is somewhere here in Upper here. You must also be licensed by this institute under what we are calling the Institute of Certified Public Secretaries Act of Kenya. And then you must uh, be a person who is uh, having these attributes. You must be a good runner. Uh, you must not be disorganized. Number two, you must be a person who is decisive. Decisiveness means the ability to make decisions. Uh, at the right time, at the right decisions. You know, there are people you deal with and they are not decisive. You don't know that you have a met one. 
<laughs> they can't decide. You are expecting them to decide so that you take action or you know the way forward. But they're just there. You have given them the, the information, but they cannot tell you, let's do this or let's not do this. Now, that indecisiveness is very, very bad. Actually, we say it is better you make the wrong decision, but to make a decision. Better you make the uh, wrong decision, but make a decision. The other thing is uh, we must have a person who is committed, uh, a person who is very good in communication skills. Actually, most of these guys who do CS, they are either, first of all, lawyers, or if they were not initially lawyers, after they have done ICS, they go to study law. And you know law uh, lawyers are very good in communication. The other thing is uh, they must be people of high integrity. They are not people of uh, questionable characters. And they are people who are keen on details. They pay attention to everything that is taking place. They don't want to assume anything. Uh, there is a question of May 2021, question 5A. May 2021, question 5A. Now, question 5A, Nasema, uh, in relation to the company secretary, may or may, I write the qualifications required for one to be registered as a company secretary. So, to Nasema, you must have sat and passed the exams. You must have the required experience. You must have what? You must be a member of ICS. You must also be a licensed. Higher. Discuss the status of the company secretary in relation to the company. I've given you six positions or six statuses. To Mesema, he's an employee of the company. To Kasema, he's a custodian of the company documents. To Kasema, he's an agent of the board. To Kasema, he is what? Uh, a liaison officer. Then to Kasema, he's a secretary to the board and also a secretary to the general meeting. So those uh, positions are the ones that uh, the candidate was expected to mention there. Uh, the next question there is November 2016. November 2016, question number 3A. November 2016, question number 3A. Mm -hmm. 2016. Which was that day? Uh, 3A. 3. Three. 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 Who is one of the officers of the company? We believe that we are not taking certain qualifications for one to be appointed as a standard citizen for a company to be in your company. Uh, and number two. Someone has the guarantee that a company shall be pensioned and in the midst of the citizen, if the citizen is a company, is a company to us. Okay, good. See, these are qualifications to the then what else they are asking is uh, what the particulars, eh? We will be looking at that. Okay, so that was about qualifications. Let's now look at appointments. Let's look at uh, appointments. Appointments. Medical appointment of a company sector. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
The process of appointing a company secretary is as follows. Process of appointing a company secretary is as follows. One, convene a board meeting. Convene a board meeting by giving a notice to all the directors. By giving a notice to all the directors. and pass a resolution to appoint the company secretary. And pass a resolution to appoint the company secretary. Number two, inform the registrar of companies inform the registrar of companies registrar of companies of the appointment within 30 days of the appointment within 30 days next number 3 is make necessary entries make necessary entries and maintain a proper register of directors and maintain a proper register of directors proper register of directors and key managerial positions and key managerial positions after the appointment. And key managerial positions after the appointment. Number four, inform the stock exchange. Inform the stock exchange In case or if the company is listed, if the company is listed, if the company is listed. So that is the four step procedure that number one, you call for the board meeting, then you appoint a secretary. Number two, you inform the registrar. Number three, you update the records, the relevant records, you update them. And number four, if you, your company is listed at the stock exchange, the Nairobi Stock Exchange, then you inform uh, the stock exchange authority of the appointment. Let's now look at the removal of a company secretary. Removal. Removal. One, the following steps should be taken. The following steps should be taken. One, convene a board meeting. Convene a board meeting. Convene a board meeting and pass a resolution to remove the secretary, the company secretary, and pass the solution to remove the company secretary. Number 
Number two. Intimate. 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 Or invite the company secretary. Or invite the company secretary. Who is to be removed? Who is to be removed? To make his presentations to the board. To make his presentations to the board. To make his presentations to the board. Number three. Convene a second board meeting. Convene a second board meeting to consider the presentations. Consider the presentations of the secretary. Secretary and decide whether and decide whether to maintain maintain or drop the decision to remove him. To maintain or drop the decision to remove him. Number four, if the decision to remove him is maintained, if the decision to remove him is maintained, maintained inform the registrar of companies, inform the registrar of companies, Within thirty days, within thirty days. Number five, inform the stock exchange of the removal. Inform the stock exchange of the removal. Uh, the last step is make the required entries in the relevant registers. Make the required entries in the relevant registers. Okay, look at this question of uh, me. 
Okay. Uh huh. Um, is it answer? Okay, good. Uh, let's now look at powers of a company secretary. Powers of a company secretary. What are their powers? One, enter into contracts. Enter into contracts. Relating to day-to-day -day administration of the company. Relating to day-to-day -day administration of the company. Number two, supervise and control. Supervise and control the secretarial department of the company. Supervise and control the secretarial department of the company. Three, issue share certificates of the company. Issue share certificates of the company. Number four, sign official documents of the company. Sign official documents of the company. Okay, so those are the powers that are available to a company secretary. They can enter into day-to-day -day contracts. So when you talk about day-to-day -day contract, there are contracts that we engage in. For example, the contracts of employment and uh, firing. So those are things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, supervise and uh, control the secretarial department if the company is huge such that they have uh, several staffs of, of uh, company secretarial department then it is in charge uh, then issuing of uh, the certificates of the company shares and then he's supposed to sign documents on behalf of the company uh, let's now look at duties Duties of a company secretary. Duties of a company secretary. So there are usually four types, so we shall classify them. Number one is called duty of disclosure. Duty of disclosure. I will explain. Disclose certain information. Disclose certain information. For inclusion in the register of directors. For inclusion in the register of directors and secretaries. And secretaries, which are, which are, number one, name, number two, address, number three, registered office. Registered office. Roman four. 
interests held in shares and debentures. Interests held in shares and debentures. So that is uh, the duty to disclose. So it is his responsibility to ensure that all that information is uh, required, is available. Number two is uh, duty to exercise due care. Duty to exercise due care, skill, and diligence, and diligence. Duty to exercise due care, skill, and diligence. And we explain. The company secretary would be held liable. The company secretary would be held liable or any loss arising from negligence. Or any loss arising from his negligence. For any loss arising from his negligence. For any loss arising from his negligence. Number C is statutory duties. Statutory duties required by Companies Act. Required by Companies Act. Companies Act. The statutory duties which are required by the Companies Act. So these ones are seven. So one, one, to be present at all company meetings, to be present at all company meetings, and record the minutes, and record the minutes. Number two, to keep and maintain, to keep and maintain all the statutory books, all the statutory books and records of the company, and records of the company such as minutes book, such as minutes book, registers book, registers book, etc. Number three is ensure proper filing of all the necessary terms. Ensure proper filing of all the necessary returns. Sure proper filing of all the necessary returns. Number four is issue notices of meetings to shareholders. Issue notices of meetings to shareholders as directed by the board of directors, as directed by the board of 
direct us. Number five is process shared transfers. Process shared transfers. Comma, documentations and recordings. Documentations and recordings. <coughs> Number six is countersign essential company documents. Countersign essential company documents. Essential company documents and certify documents. And certify documents. For certain matters such as banking, and certify documents for certain matters such as banking. Another one is ensure safe custody of company seal. Ensure safe custody of company seal. So those are the statutory duties that a company secretary must be found fulfilling as required by the company's act. We are saying number one, he should be present in all the company meetings, more so the general meetings and the directors meetings. Although directors' meetings may not be very practical, uh, uh, you find that the directors at times may not invite, but it's required to be there. Uh, he's supposed to maintain all the statutory books. Statutory books are the books that the company must maintain. If you remember when we discussed about the registered office, <clears throat> I think we listed almost 10 or 12 registers that should be kept in the registered office. So it is the work of the company secretary to ensure that all these registers are there. Uh, he should also ensure that we are filing returns, uh, not necessarily to compute tax, but there is what we call the filing of returns. That is what that is his responsibility. It is uh, also his responsibility to issue what we are calling uh, notices to meetings. And this is done at the direction of the board of directors. The other thing is that uh, he should ensure that there is proper recordings, there is proper documentations of the share issue, the share transfers. Anything that is rotating around the share ownership, he should be on top of that game. Then he should countersign any document. Now this countersigning is a way of certifying, is a way of confirming that this document has actually originated from the company itself. And uh, closely related to that, he is therefore the custodian of the company seal. Remember we say the company seal is the one that acts as the signature of the company. Because a company as a legal person cannot be able to append a signature. So instead of the signature, we use the company seal. Good. Let's now look at number four, which are called administrative duties. Administrative duties. Administrative duties. So here there are also seven. So number one, authenticate company documentation and then tickets authenticates company documentation number two issue share and 
stock certificates issue share and stock certificates Another one is oversight of various documentations. Oversight of various documentations. In the company. Another one is administer employee share option scheme. Administer employee share option scheme. Another one is administer insurance and pension schemes. Administer insurance and pension schemes. Another one is ensure safe custody and use. Ensure safe custody and use of company sale. Safe custody and use of company sale. Another one is manage the company premises and facilities. Manage the company premises and facilities. So those are the administrative duties of a company secretary. So look at August 2022, question 2A. August 2022, question 2A. Uh, and those two others. Look at them. Uh -huh. The one of uh, August 2022. Huh? It's 2B, not A. August 2022, question 2B. Yeah, sure. This idea is already paid for the last.
So B, in a sense, uh, the company secretary is a senior position in public or private company. With reference to this statement, explain the status of our company secretary. I think we had said that the status, eh? He can act as an employee, as a custodian, as an agent, as a liaison, the secretary to the AGM and the board. Discuss the duties of our company secretary in a potent company. So we have given very many duties there, uh, which we have categorized uh, as a duty of disclosure. We have also talked about the duty of due care and diligence. We have talked about the statutory duties, which are seven, and we have talked of administrative duties, which are seven again. So you have like 15 duties or 16, that you can pick any three from there. When you look at November 2019, question 6A, November 2019, question 6A, uh, describe six powers and duties of uh, the company secretary. So I've given you four powers, so he can enter into contracts, he can uh, supervise and control, he can do what? Issues, share certificate, and he can sign the official documents. Now, both ones, you also now provide them with a few duties, and therefore, on the basis of that, you have your six months. So you can cite like three powers and three duties. Eh? Ah, yeah. The last one is November 2017, question 2C. November 2017. Question 2C. Uh, it's on page 25. I think it should be B. Question 2B. And to B should be B, not C. That says that company secretaries perform different types of duties in the company. Now, with reference to the above statement, explain. I think that should be five duties, not like five duties of a company secretary under each of the two categories below. So you give five statutory duties that we have given seven of them, and you give five under the admin, and we have written uh, seven of them. So that is manager. Let's now look at liability of company secretary. Liability of company secretary. Liability of company secretary. And we write that the company secretary, the company secretary has fiduciary duties to perform, has fiduciary fiduciary duties to perform for the company. Dash and duties to perform for the company. First of all, he should therefore act in good faith and honesty. He should therefore act in good faith and honesty. Therefore, act in good faith and honesty. Stop. He is personally liable. He is personally liable 
to criminal charges. It's personal liable to criminal charges if he commits wrongful acts. If he commits wrongful acts. So, so there are abilities that are divided into two as follows. Their abilities are divided into two as follows. One is statutory liabilities. Statutory liabilities. And right at, these are liabilities imposed on the company secretary. These are liabilities imposed on the company secretary by the company's act. By the company's act. By the company's act. And any other relevant act, and any other relevant act, or failure to discharge that duty, or failure to discharge statutory duties. Number two, they are called contractual liabilities. Contractual liabilities. Contractual liabilities. These are liabilities that arise. These are liabilities that arise. Out of breaching, out of breaching his contract, out of breaching his contract of service with the company, breaching his contract of service with the company. So we are saying that a company secretary should act with a lot of honesty, with a lot of good faith. And uh, in case he's found guilty of having acted wrongly, he will be held criminally liable. And these liabilities can be statutory as prescribed by the Companies Act and any other relevant act, or they could be arising from his failure to comply with the terms of the contract which he has signed with the company for his services. Uh -huh. The next thing that we need to look at is called the Register of Secretaries. The Register of Secretaries. The Register of Secretaries. The Register of Secretaries. I appoint number one under that. We write that a company shall keep. A company shall keep a register of secretaries. A register of secretaries containing all the required particulars. Containing all the required particulars of the secretary. All the required particulars of the secretary. Point number two. The register is kept available. The register is kept available. for inspection, available for inspection, 
at the registered office of the company. Fireable for inspection at the registered office of the company. The registered office of the company. Number three. A company shall within 14 days. A company shall within 14 days. Road with the registrar. Road with the registrar. For registration. Go to the registrar for registration. A notice of appointments. A notice of appointments. Comma. Cessation of appointments. Cessation. Cessation of appointments. Cessation of appointments. and of the date on which they occurred and of the date on which they occurred point number four If the company secretary is a natural person, if the company secretary is a natural person, the register should contain, the register should contain semicolon in Roman one, Roman one, current name, current name, current name, and any former name, current name, and any former name. For the last 20 years. For the last 20 years. Number two, address of the secretary. Address of the secretary. I appoint number five now. If the company secretary is a legal person, if the company secretary is a legal person, if the company secretary is a legal person, the register should contain the following. The register should contain the following. One, one, name of the company, name of the company, number two, the registered or principal office of the company, the registered or Principal office of the company. We start the principal office of the company. 
Number one is number three, the legal form of the company. The legal form of the company that is private or public. Private or public. And uh, number four is registration number of the company. Registration number of the company. And the last item, number six, is that the register should also contain details. The register should also contain details. Regarding how change of particulars should be captured. Regarding how change of particulars should be captured. Change of particulars should be captured. So that is about the register. Look at this question of November 2016. Question number 38. November 2016, question 3A. I'm a little bit my soul. Do you Oh, three, eight, one, two, eh? Summarize the particulars of a company. A company shall ensure are in the register of companies if the secretary of a public company is a company or a firm. So if they are company, to the same you should show us the name, the registered office, the legal form, and what? The registration number. Good. So we therefore call it a day at that point. That is all that I had for today's lesson. Uh, so we pick up from there. That should now be on Thursday 8 30. Yeah? Thursday 8 30. Thursday 8 30. Because tomorrow you have a double IFR. Yeah? Okay, thank you.